Hello, welcome to a quick presentation explaining question 16 from the January 2010 NXL Physics on the Go paper. Okay, pause the video and read this question and attempt it. Okay, so if you've read the question, you need to have a pen in your hand and you need to be annotating it really if you're, if you're in the exam. Okay, it says the photograph shows a sequence of images of a bouncing tennis ball. A student, lets, a student plots the following graph and claims that it shows the vertical motion of the ball in the photograph. Notice it says claims. It's sort of a bit dubious. It sounds like the examiner doesn't believe the student's done it correctly. Okay, so the ball's come down, gone back up again, come down. Okay, so it will have been getting faster and faster and faster. Um, change of direction. Uh, so, like, very big acceleration for a short amount of time. And then it would have left with maximum velocity and it would be getting slower, 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 slower. Then the magnitude would be increasing, the velocity magnitude would be increasing again until it hits the, the ground. Okay, it says, without carrying out any calculations, describe how the following can be found from the graph. The vertical distance traveled uh, by the ball between 0.5 seconds and 1 second. Here is 0.5 seconds, here is 1 second, the vertical distance traveled, okay? That would just be the area underneath the graph, this section here, okay? So you need to be able to say that so the examiner has no uh, qualm about giving you the mark for it. So you could say, it says without calculations, without doing any calculations, so you've got to say it verbally. Uh, so uh, calculate the area, whoops, this is why I don't teach English, calculate the area um, under the line uh, x, y, okay? And you might even want to put in half base times height. Okay, how would you find the acceleration at y? So here's y, okay? Um, now, since the acceleration is going to be the gradient of this graph, gradient of a velocity time graph will tell you acceleration, uh, and since the gradient is the same throughout, you could just find the gradient of, find the gradient of the line x, y. Okay? I don't want to get confused with it being a uh, multiplication sign, so I'll make it that x. Okay. Um, now, things to notice here, it's very easy to lose a mark because you say, find the gradient of the line. Because there are many lines on this graph, the examiner doesn't know which line you're talking about, he's not going to give you the mark, okay? You have to say the line x, oh, if I said x, y, I meant to say x, z. Well, I could do x, y, or x, z, actually, that's fine, okay? Um, either would work, okay. All right, let's move on. Okay, so uh, pause the video, read this question carefully. Okay, so it tells us that the graph contains several errors, okay, and um, we've got to explain two of these errors. All right, so there's actually a lot of errors you can spot on this graph, but it does take some careful and close examination. All right, um, so let's have a look. So error number one, okay, let's first just think about how the ball would be moving. <clears throat> it's going to start with zero velocity. It's going to get faster and faster and faster, okay, as we go down. The magnitude of that velocity will be increasing. It's then going to be changing direction. It's going to be experiencing a force. The ball will sort of uh, squash a little bit, store up some of, store the kinetic energy of the ball in elastic energy, then uh, transfer that energy back into kinetic energy in the ball, and the ball will be leaving the ground with maximum velocity, slowing down and down and down, so the, ve the the value will be getting smaller until it hits a point where it's about zero. Well, it's definitely going to hit a point where it's zero. And then it's going to increase its magnitude again as it falls back down to point Z. So error number one we can spot on the graph is, is that the ball has given a initial velocity. It should be zero. So um, at time zero, the velocity should also be zero. Okay, that's one point. 
Right, another point is that if you look carefully, you can see that the gradient of this line and the gradient of this line are not the same. The gradients are the acceleration. Since they're both <coughs> accelerating due to gravity, then you'd expect them to be the same, so there's obviously an error there as well. So if I maybe label this line AB, I can say line AB, C graph, so I want the examiner to look at the graph. Um, does not have the same gradient as line uh, x, z. Okay, they should as both accelerate due to gravity. Due to gravity. Okay. Uh, you can see from my handwriting that uh, I, I really wouldn't make a very good English teacher. Okay, let's look for another error. Okay, there is another error, in fact, which is that this point from B to X, this line, is perfectly vertical. That is actually when the ball is changing direction here. Okay, and the ball is going to be in contact with the ground for an amount of time. It couldn't be an infinitely small amount of time, because then the force would have to be infinitely large. Okay, and it just doesn't make any sense. So this line should have a, a, sh a shallow gradient. Sorry, not a shallow, a very slight, a very, very steep, sorry, gradient. But it should have a gradient. This is just a vertical line. So line, uh, sorry, um, line <coughs> BX, right, should have some gradient. Gradient. Okay. Um, any more errors? Yeah, there is actually another error. Okay, so as this ball came down here, right, it's fallen from this height, right? It's hit, it's struck the ground here. It's going to be maximum velocity as it strikes the ground, okay? Doosh, here. Okay, if we read this velocity off, it is, whatever it is, about 5, okay? Minus 5 meters per second. The ball then falls from a lower height. It's had less time to accelerate, so the velocity here should be smaller. If we look at the graph, it's not. It's exactly the same. So um, velocity or velocities at 0.5 seconds and 1.5 are the same. Okay. Velocity at point at 1.5 seconds should be smaller. Okay, so I've, I've explained more than two points, but I think that it's worth going through all of them so that you could uh, pick up on all of them. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.